The Uncharted Territories is a podcast about seeing the unseen in the world of matter. Join me, Shara Prophet, the Mind Magic Coach, and my partner, astrologer Scott Tajirian, as we take an esoteric look this season into the life, death, and afterlife of a variety of celebrities and public figures who lost their lives prematurely or unexpectedly. Hi, Shara. Hey, Scott. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Very excited always to discuss our next case. Yes. That's what we're calling it. Case. (laughs) Yes. Okay, cool. The next case is Whitney Houston. Today we are discussing Whitney Houston. Yes, we are. And do we need to tell people who Whitney Houston is? I mean, mean, if you don't know who Whitney Houston (laughs) is, I don't know how old you are, but oh my goodness, (laughs) like, hello. (laughs) You know, I want to say one thing off the top about Whitney Houston, because I grew up in the 80s. She was the biggest thing there was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of those songs, like she went platinum so many times. She's the queen of pop. But there's a moment that I will never forget. She's the queen of the, the night. The queen of the night. The queen of the night. Did I get that wrong? Uh, no. I okay. mean, I'm just saying it because of the song that oh, she sang, she remember? Sang and uh, Bodyguard. Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's the amazing thing about Whitney Houston, too. Like, And, you know, we've talked about Dorothy Dandridge. And Dorothy Dandridge, and you said in the Dorothy Dandridge episode how when they when you were meeting with Whitney and you finished that, then you invited Dorothy in, mm-hmm. right? Is that yep. right? And yep. then they both acknowledged each other, like legends acknowledging each mm-hmm. other. And what's amazing about both Dorothy Dandridge and Whitney Houston is they're just multi-talented individuals. Like not only were they just incredible singers, but they were actors too. Yes. Great actors. Yep. I mean, Whitney Houston, I think was in, maybe three films and mm-hmm. they made a combined like over $500 million or something, yeah. like something stupid like that. Yeah. Uh, but, but my, my memory of Whitney Houston, I'll, I'll never forget. I was probably about 15 years old and I was watching the Super Bowl. It was, it was 1990 and she sang oh, the, yeah. the star spangled banner, oh which God. is, which is really just not a good song. Yeah. You know, no offense to yeah. you know, any patriots out there or whatever, but like that's the not the forefathers. Yeah, or forefathers. Well, they, the forefathers didn't even write right. that song. Like the Star Spangled Banner has really only been the national anthem for maybe like 80 years. Oh, since okay. Like the I don't 1930s. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the song is actually older. Mm-hmm. It goes back to I think the 1600s. But and then the lyrics came about in like the 1800s, but they didn't put it together as a song with those lyrics mm-hmm. and it become the national anthem until like the 1930s. So, okay, it's it's not a good song, yeah. it's not a song that you're jamming to, that right. like wow, I really want to hear that song. <laughs> but when she sang that song, yeah, oh I my mean, goodness, it, my whole body shook, yeah, I, I felt it from head to toe, yeah her voice resonate through my body like nothing I've ever felt before. Mm -hmm. Well, she's a healing tool. Her voice is a healing tool. tool. Yeah, She is a healing tool. She is an instrument of God in Mm -hmm. that way where just, and I've watched this documentary about her uh, a few years ago. It came out and the drummer that she was touring with on her last tour said that Every night I got to watch her body Mm. when she would sing. And he's like, she would do this thing with her back and you would just Mm. see her back expand and all the muscles in her back expand just as she's about to let out. And I'm just getting the chills just thinking about it. But go look up that Star Spangled Banner in the Super Bowl in 1990. No one has ever sung it no like not like Whitney that Houston none not like she that is, she's one of a kind and so I'm so excited to there's, be I mean there's literally n- no one like her there's no vo- vocalist none. on this planet no. not now or not before. now or before <laughs> like Whitney Houston no. I mean no wow <laughs> and so looking at her astrological code you know, I, I love looking at astrological codes. You see where the planets are aligning with the stars. It, it's like you're looking at the work of God. Yes, And when you, you look are. at this with Ooh. Whitney Houston, 
I mean, my jaw was on the floor mm-hmm. because I'm like, yes, this is this is special right mm-hmm. here. This is everyone's special. Everyone's a miracle. But this is like there's some some different kind of magic. Yeah, every happening. now and again, you get one. You're like, <laughs> what in the world? Yeah, like this is one crazy snowflake <laughs> yeah. that I I haven't seen anything like this even close. And it's no wonder that she had the talent that she did and the success that she did yeah. as a performer. And before we start, I just wanted to say rest in peace to Bobby Brown's son Absolutely. who recently passed away. Yes. That family, I can't even... It, what they've been through. What they've been through. I just can't even imagine yes. his heart. So oh I'm just God. sending Prayers so to Bobby much Brown. love to Bobby Brown right now. Love. Sending lots of love to yes. him. Lots of love to Bobby Brown. Yeah. Prayers, yes. light to him and his family. Absolutely. And all their loved ones. Yes. Because they've been through so much loss. He's lost two children and... And his wife. And his wife. Yes. Probably the love of his life. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up, Shara. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was just thinking about that. I'm like, wow. This mm-hmm. is crazy. No, I mean, that just... I saw that and I was yeah. like, What? Again? Yeah. He used to go to the same spiritual center that I went to. Mm. So I've had the pleasure of meeting him mm-hmm. and in passing, saying hi and things. Just a really a, a really cool, sweet yes. guy. You know? Yes. Really yes. nice guy. So and he's been through a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So well, let's get into it. Because <laughs> okay. Whitney what? is here and she is smiling. Oh, she yes. loved that introduction. I lo- I lo- oh, good, good. Yes. <laughs> so she's Tell me excited. What, what yes. was she wearing? What was she wearing when okay. you saw her? I'd love to know what people yes. are wearing. It's, <laughs> it's interesting it is, what they yes. what they choose to, yes. to wear, you yes. know, and I don't know if they change clothes or what. I'm sure they do. Why not? I don't know. Or maybe not. Maybe you not. Need to? I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they change clothes. I mean, you know, if I was Whitney Houston, I would still be wearing well, my clothes. They can or they can't. Whatever, <laughs> whatever they, do, they, whatever they, they want to do, do, right? Exactly. Well, she came in with white pants, okay. a white turtleneck, yes. a long white coat, uh-huh. and a, a head wrap. Okay. So okay. it reminded me of, and, and also this also could possibly be my interpretation of what I'm used to seeing her as as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it reminded me oh goodness i think it was the bodyguard i keep oh yeah right. clearly i love that movie right, right? oh god so yes. <laughs> i keep <Yes>. referencing it <laughs> i don't even know if it was that good of a movie but i, haven't I mean seen i haven't it in, seen it in, in years, so long but man, when i saw it i loved it it was great it was you know great yeah I mean, it, yeah movie made a lot of money it did the, <laughs> it the, the, the costumes and the, and the, the soundtrack. singing the yes. soundtrack i mean it was just it was just this big thing. Like, yes. oh, my God. It was an event. It was an event. Absolutely. <laughs> it was an event Absolutely. for sure. So I'm thinking that is what she showed up as an all white. Well, it, it makes total sense. Total sense. Astrologically. Mm-hmm. You know, I mentioned with Dorothy Dandridge, she was wearing a red dress with mm-hmm. white polka dots. Mm-hmm. And that's very striking. Yep. Dorothy Dandridge is a Leo rising. Mm-hmm. Whitney Houston is a Leo sun. So they're both uh, queens uh, in their own are. right. They're yes, both they queens in their own right. And if somebody walks in with a white dress, turtleneck, headdress, all white, I mean, are you going to look at that? Uh, yeah, you are. You're going to pay attention. <laughs> you're going to pay attention. <laughs> you're going to pay attention. You're going to be yes, like, who's that? Exactly. Whoa. So she, I mean, it makes sense. And she loves to be noticed <laughs> and known and, and seen and heard. So... Well, you know, and the thing about the Leos, though, too, it's it's I I feel like it's not so much them wanting to be noticed, but people just notice them. Yeah. yeah. And they appreciate being noticed. I mean, the queen wants to be appreciated. Right. But the queen also doesn't want to have to get you to appreciate them. Exactly. It's like, no, you just appreciate me because I'm the queen. I shouldn't have to tell you or direct Mm -hmm. your attention over here. You're going to notice me. Queen of the night. Queen of the night. <laughs> yes. Yes, Shara. Absolutely. <laughs> so she came in and she just kind of like draped herself across my bed, you mm-hmm. know, like, hey. And I was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> she got up? comfortable. She got comfortable, right away. you I know. Love it. And when I, I like to get the running theme mm-hmm. of each case's life, yes, right? The theme of the life. Um. <laughs> I keep sorry. The queen of the night. The queen of the night. Like the theme, the theme, of, theme of the, the life. The th- theme of the life for the queen of the night. <laughs> All right. Let me focus. So she said that power, power 
has been the running theme in her life, being in charge, um, standing her ground, getting what she wants out of life. And she said that there were times that she didn't want all of that power. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, it, it makes sense. I mean, when you say power, my eyes go to this astrological code mm -hmm. and I see there's a point in the astrological code. It's called the midheaven. That is the highest point in the mm -hmm. sky. And there are one, two, three, four lines directed right at that point in the sky, the highest mm -hmm. point in the sky. Her sun, which is her identity, Jupiter, which is her luck. The moon, which is her emotions, and Saturn, which is the authority, the planetary ruler of the Midheaven, all connected to the Midheaven, which represents the authority. The authority is ah, power. Interesting. Right? Wow. Yes. Okay. Wow. Yes. All right. So... I shouldn't be surprised by now, right? I'm always like, wow. Like, you can be surprised. Yeah, That's okay. <laughs> I'll take it. It's fun to be yes. surprised and amazed. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So she said that she wanted to just lose control sometimes and pop out of her body, which makes sense because that's a form of escape, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So drugs were that escape for her. That's mm -hmm. what it was. And yes. um, she said that she wanted to get away from the perfectionism and she was expected to be and act like a princess when all she wanted to do was run the streets and fuck <laughs> a lot yeah <laughs> so I, we i started laughing and she started laughing i was like okay <laughs> I love how she's just getting really <laughs> blunt with it. You she know? <laughs> did say that she wanted, that's what she wanted to do. I love it. Um, and she said that I couldn't do what I wanted with boys because mm -hmm. mom was strict and, you know, they were always in church. Mm -hmm. So it was really difficult to do things with boys. And that is why she started fooling around with girls because it was easier. Right. You know, a little more covert. Yeah. And I mean, if you're horny, right, you just. You get with? it how you get it, yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> it's just like, OK, exactly. whatever. But she said she never considered herself to be gay. You know, um, she was like, I love men. I always have and I still do. Mm -hmm. um, she said my ass was just horny and mm -hmm. <laughs> it was easy to get down with girls. Mm -hmm. So now when I asked her about Robin, she got somber. Robin was one of her really close friends, yeah, uh, like childhood friend. friends. Yeah. And they formed, allegedly, they formed a romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and since then, I believe she wrote a book about it or a tell-all book or whatever. Okay. Um, I don't know. I haven't read the book. But when I brought Robin's name up, Whitney got very somber. She got very quiet. Mm -hmm. um, she kind of just kind of looked down a little bit. So. I don't know what that was all about, but it mm. wasn't something that she really wanted to get into. So I don't push. Right. They don't want to talk about it. I'm like, hey. Well, it's interesting because, I mean, that was kind of a secretive relationship yeah. in life. So, you know, it's like you don't die and then all of a sudden you change and all the secrets exactly. come out. Right. You know, you can tell whatever story you want to tell people. That's right. So if she was shielding that relationship in her physical life, mm -hmm. then why wouldn't she shield it on the other side as well? Absolutely. And that's why I just was just like, okay, you don't have to, we do not have right. to discuss that. That sure. is your private business. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, respect. do what you do. Yeah, definitely yeah. respect. Yes. And so we just kind of moved past that part. And when I asked her, because I was just trying to switch the, the mood up a little bit, mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, okay, well, tell me what the most significant thing that you've ever done or that's ever happened in your life. And she perked up and she said, oh, having my daughter. Hmm. Yes. You okay. Know. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of things here okay. that I want to touch on. Okay. Number one, the relationship with Robin or whoever, who, you know, anyone that she's in relationship, mm -hmm. Bobby Brown, Robin, the eighth house is the house of death. This mm -hmm. represents karmic bonds, the bonds that you are connected to. And so in her eighth house is Neptune. And Neptune is the cloudy planet. Mm. So that brings some clouds to the secretive house, the karmic bonds house, not really showing who you are bonded to. 
Neptune is also in a stressful alignment with Venus, the planet of relationships. So that again brings some some clouds to the relationship vibe. So there's something about Whitney. She's very honest with you or straightforward with you. Her her Mercury is directly opposite her ascendant. Mm-hmm. And Mercury is communication. So she's very, yeah, I wanted to fuck. Yeah. But who, when, how? That's none of your business. None of business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's none of your business. Mm-hmm. So when she lit up about her daughter, that is that's very profound because the soul's purpose, the north node mm-hmm. that represents your soul's purpose, what you're meant to cultivate in this life, the traits that you're meant to cultivate, the gifts that you're meant to receive through cultivating those traits. The North Node is always 180 degrees away from the South Node. The South Node represents the past life karma. Mm. What you represents the traits that you cultivated and the gifts that you received through cultivating those traits in those past lives that you've brought into this life. But the more that you're spending your energy in the Mm. South Node, the more you feel unfulfilled. The more you're spending your energy in the North Node, the more your soul feels at peace. So Whitney's South Node was in Capricorn, which represents career. Mm -hmm. Her north node was in Cancer, which represents the mother. Yes. So that's why being a mother was like the pinnacle for her. (laughs) Now her her north node was also in the fifth house, which is associated with the fifth sign, which is Leo. This is the house of children, Mm -hmm. but it represents the energetic expression of children, being the center of attention, play, fun, games. So being on the stage was a part of her soul's purpose, but also being a mother was a part of her soul's purpose, a major part. And the North Node was in stressful alignment with Whitney's moon, which is the emotions, which also represents the mother. Mm -hmm. So there was some difficulty in motherhood for Whitney. Yeah, there was some difficulty in motherhood for her. So that's so interesting that you say that because every now and again, I'm able to tap into a past life Mm -hmm. for whomever I'm working with. Right. Yes. So a past life came up for Whitney and Bobby. Mm -hmm. And basically they were together as lovers. Whitney was Moorish royalty. Mm -hmm. Okay. She was a princess Mm -hmm. and she came in in this white dress and Bobby was dressed as a high ranking military soldier and they were both married, but she fell ill. Mm -hmm. It was something with the heart and the lungs in the chest area Mm -hmm. and she died and he was grief stricken, but was forced to marry her sister. And they ended up having four children, two girls, one of which was Bobby Christina. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so then and there were two boys and one of the boys was born with a mental illness and um, they had to try again for a healthy baby, a healthy baby boy, somebody who could possibly could take the throne. Yes. And Whitney was supposed to give birth to Bobby Christina in that lifetime, but she passed on. Okay. So it was and a missed so opportunity. It was a missed opportunity. So in this lifetime, she was able to actually fulfill that. Right. So th- that could be one of the reasons as well that she was so excited about bringing this child into the world and that it was a girl. Yes. I don't think she was aware of the past life. Mm-hmm. Well, she might have been. I'm not sure. But mm-hmm. it felt like a cycle had been completed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's really interesting that you bring it up. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, she was really excited about that. And she said, you know, I never thought that I could accomplish something so amazing about bringing, you know, having her daughter. And she said nothing is as amazing as childbirth, though. Mm. And I don't know about that. But uh, (laughs) well, for somebody that's North Node is in cancer. Yes. That makes sense. Yes. That makes sense. Absolutely. Yes. If your North Node is in cancer, then you are here to be. A nurturer. Yeah. A caregiver. Mm-hmm. Yes. Absolutely. There's other ways to do that. Though. There are. You don't have to be a mother. There are men born with with the North Node in cancer. Absolutely. So they're not giving birth. Yeah. 
I am not either. <laughs> um, so she said that out of all of the awards, the Billboard Top 100s, the shows, the travel, the experiences, the fame, the fortune, having her baby is hands down the most significant thing that she has ever done. Mm. That was like I can see the that. most important thing to her. I can see that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So sometimes I like to get a detail about them that may not be easy to find mm -hmm. online and mm -hmm. things like that. And so, you know, I asked her what was some of her favorite things until she said she used to get these, I guess they're like candies or something. There were caramel, like toasted coconut cream candies or something. Sounds good. It does sound good. <laughs> but she said she used to order them from Switzerland. And she said, I would have them shipped to me, especially when I was pregnant. Mm. So I don't know if anybody out there who was close to Whitney knows if she ate those or not. I'd like to know if that's yeah, something, let us you know, know. Let, let us know. So, you know, Whitney has a lot of, she has a lot of power in her. She was not only a queen here on earth, but she's still a queen on the other side. For like sure. she really is. I believe it. She really is. So she comes, she's kind of like sitting on something that would be like a throne mm -hmm. right now as mm -hmm. I'm seeing her in my mind's eye. So um, she is definitely still singing mm -hmm. and is still being her magical, amazing goddess self. Good. I would say that she's more than a queen. She's a goddess, yes. you know, so because that's the kind of energy that, that she carries with yes. her. And when we were talking about the drugs, a lot of people thought that Bobby was the one that got her hooked. And no. she was like, I've been using drugs yeah. since I was like 12 years old, right. <laughs> you know, smoking weed and drinking. And, you know, she was like, I've been I've been getting high. Anything I probably got him well, on that, it. <laughs> that, <laughs> so. yeah, that was the image that was portrayed to exactly. the public because it's like. Oh, look at wholesome Whitney Houston. You know, she didn't really get to be herself, it she seems didn't. like, in the public eye. No. It was the persona that the people that were handling mm -hmm. her career, that they put that out, that image. I mean, she's from Jersey. You know what I mean? Like, Whitney was totally. hood. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. and she's, she's also a Pisces rising. That's mm -hmm. the sign that was rising on the horizon when she was born, Pisces. Mm -hmm. And when I think of Pisces, I think of two things. Music, because Pisces takes you into a dream world. Mm -hmm. Pisces is the dream world, and music takes you into a dream world. Yeah. And I think of drugs and alcohol. Oh, yeah. Because Pisces is about the dream world, mm -hmm. and drugs and alcohol take you to a dream world. Mm-hmm. They're escapism. They sure do yes. take you to a dream world. <laughs> and so, yes. But, you know, having Pisces on the ascendant, she's somebody who, when she is around people she didn't know, mm -hmm. or in situations where she was uncomfortable or unfamiliar, very sensitive, picking up people's energies. And she could really feel the vibe of the room. And if that vibe was negative, when you're a famous person, everyone's putting their attention on, on you. you. Absolutely. And so you're feeling their energy. If you're doing a show or you're in front of a large audience and they're having a bad day or if they boo you for whatever reason, I mean, that is going to be a lead weight oh, yeah. on your soul. Oh, yeah. And so in order to escape that, drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And making a mistake in the public eye. Oh, God. Can you imagine the oh, scrutiny? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Great point. And I mean, this is why we have to be... Be compassionate to human beings. I don't care if they're a politician, if they're a celebrity, just because they choose to live their lives publicly doesn't mean that is open season. Absolutely. They're still a human being. Absolutely. Think about what, think about if it was your child, how oh, would you God. feel if somebody was yeah. bullying your child? Well, and, you know, and people say, well, that's their choice. And it's like, but it's your choice to treat everyone with respect. Exactly. I have so many astrological codes of, public figures and it really helped me create a new level of appreciation for them yeah. because you really see how human they are yeah and their gifts and their challenges their struggles mm -hmm. it's right here in the planets and stars i see how whitney struggled i feel for her yeah. i have deep compassion for her and it's not easy being in the public eye no I, I can't even imagine. No. I, I've never had a desire. <laughs> never had a desire. Yeah. It's just, it's a lot of work. Yes. Yeah, it really is. Yes. So, you know, thank you 
thank you for well yes for them saying yes and yes. and saying yes to to being an entertainer and loving what they do so deeply that they're yes. willing to you know kind of sacrifice themselves definitely to do it that's an interesting thing about about Whitney's astrological code is is she has two planets in her first house, which is the house that represents the face, the body, the personality. Yeah. One is the moon, hmm. and the moon is the emotion. So when the moon is in the first house, you're willing to show your emotions to people yeah. that you don't know. Her moon is also in Aries, which is the supremely confident sign mm -hmm. symbolized by the ram. So her sun is in Leo, symbolized by the lion. Her moon is in... Aries, symbolized by the ram, these are the two most confident creatures of the zodiac. So that gave her great confidence, but at the same time, she was deeply insecure because Chiron, the wounded healer, was also in the first house, which represents a wound to her self confidence. Chiron was in Pisces, which represents a wound to her unconscious. So she had a wound in her unconscious a wound in her self-confidence, even though she was also portrayed as supremely confident. And it sounds weird, but when you just think about how complex people are, you're a walking contradiction of yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that we all are. We all are. So she was very confident and mm -hmm. very insecure. Mm -hmm. And that makes perfect sense. And, <laughs> and that's, but that's balance. You yes. know what I mean? You know, it's yes. balance because there's going to be, there has to be something to keep those skills balanced, you know, um, you can't be all the way insecure and you can't be all the way 100 percent confident. There's something that we are all a little insecure about. Yes. Something. Well, everybody has Chiron in their astrological code. Mm -hmm. So it's you have a wound somewhere. Yep. It's just where and how. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. And even if you heal that wound, there's probably another one. <laughs> oh, always. Well, you're healing the wound your entire life. Absolutely. It doesn't end. It's a journey. It's yes. not a destination. Exactly. Yes. It, I mean, exactly. it took me a really long time to get okay with that because I was just like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? I always have to be doing this work. Right. And once I accepted it, I was like, okay, cool. I get yeah. to do this work. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is one of my hard days. This is a lesson day. Exactly. Fair enough. Exactly. I will grow from this. Yep. It's all information. Yes. Yes, indeed. Well, let's talk about the days leading up to the ending mm. of Miss Whitney. Well, before we even get there, I okay. do want to scale back just a little bit because okay. I want to talk about a relationship with her mother and father. Okay. I don't think we touched on that yet. No. Um, and I feel like it's very important. It is because important. Because this is the first relationship that you have is with the people that raise you. Mm -hmm. So from an astrological perspective, her moon, the mother, was in alignment with Saturn, the father. That creates some restriction in relation to the mother. That creates some conflict in relation to the mother and father. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious if she talked to you about that at all, because um, I'm pretty sure that she had a difficult relationship with her mother. Oh, yeah. And, and it, it shows right here in her astrological code, because the moon is being restrained by Saturn. Mm -hmm. Saturn is also in alignment, as is the moon, with Jupiter. Jupiter expands everything. So it's enough to have the moon in relation to Saturn, that's yeah. stressful. Yeah. That's, that's going to create a stressful dynamic between the parents. It's going to create a restrictive relationship between the mother and the child. Mm -hmm. But then you add Jupiter in there, which expands everything. Mm. It makes it... It's like a magnifying glass. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even bigger. Yeah. Even bigger, even more intense. And all these points are leading up to her midheaven, mm -hmm. which is her career. Yeah. And so she was driven by her mother, mm -hmm. her father. Who's also a singer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's similar to like Dorothy Dandridge's mm -hmm. situation. They have very, where, very... And, and oh they have goodness. similarities in their astrological codes because Dorothy Dandridge's moon is also in alignment with her midheaven, mm -hmm. just like Whitney Houston's mm -hmm. is in alignment with her midheaven. So there's an emotional connection 
to achieving something in this life. Yeah. Yeah. Driven by the mother. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And the only thing she really said about her mother was that her mother was very, very strict. She couldn't mm-hmm. be herself. Yes. She had to be this perfect princess. Mm. And it made her resentful of her power. It right. made her very resentful of her power. So she wanted to always escape. Yes. And I think that her mother was restricting because she knew how powerful she was. There was some envy there. Mm. Jealousy. I think it might have been more. I'm not picking up on envy, jealousy. I'm picking up on like a protective type mm. of a thing. Like kind of I want to protect you from yourself. I want to mm. save you from yourself. Okay. Where it could have been almost um, a fear of, oh, my goodness, I hope she doesn't make a mistake like I made mm-hmm. at some point. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, sure. Um, I'm not I'm not really picking up. It could have definitely been a little bit of, well, you know, because mom was a singer as well. Mm-hmm. So seeing your child become one of the biggest, mm-hmm. biggest, biggest stars yes. this world has this world has ever seen. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure she felt a little a certain kind of way about that. Yeah. But as she was growing up, it was more of, OK, I see how much power this little one has inside of her and it could be very destructive so let me try to protect her from herself so she tried to keep her sheltered Mm -hmm. so that she wouldn't but i mean basically it's like a it's like hiding a bomb right (laughs) you know what i mean under a couch eventually is going to blow. blow up right yeah right what are you seeing as far as everything with her mom the moon is in aries so okay so this is leadership it's confidence mm-hmm. it's power it's it's the ram charging ahead mm-hmm. so there is kind of a you know this is how you need to do things mm-hmm. she's directing the child mm-hmm. that's what it is mm-hmm. now i also want to point out mars in the seventh house which dorothy dandridge also had mars in the seventh house and the seventh house is the house of marriage. So this is the God of war in the house of marriage. And there mm. was a lot of volatility, I believe, in Whitney's oh, yeah. oh. relationships. Oh, yeah. Yes. Big time. So this is why. I mean, they loved each other and they were best friends, but that doesn't mean that there it wasn't. <laughs> you wasn't know? Ozzy and Harriet? <laughs> yeah. Or, uh... <laughs> it doesn't mean that there wasn't some war happen up, right. happening up in there. Exactly. You know? Sometimes that's when it happens the most because you're so super close and they have past life energy tied into it, too. And that's the thing. They're, they're working out the energies that have been stored up from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime exactly. that, they've, that they've spent together. Exactly. That's going to be charged. Oh, yeah. Big time. And when Mars is there, it's it's pushing you. Mm-hmm. Like I tell people, don't be afraid to fight. Yeah. Don't be afraid to argue. Yeah. That releases the tension. Mm-hmm. It's okay. You mm-hmm. got in a fight? Good. Yeah. Because you let it out. Yep. Now you can move forward. Exactly. And if you survive it, <laughs> it makes you stronger, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. As long, you know, you want to be able to fight with respect. Absolutely. For one another. Absolutely. Like even... You know, you see people getting an octagon or a ring together and they still hug afterwards. I yep. mean, that's that's wild. And they to play me. by the rules. Yeah. You know, you've yeah. just been trying to beat this other person, but now you're hugging them I afterwards. Know. But but that's how that's how it should be in relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, you go at it, but then there's respect at the end of the day. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. As long as it's not toxic mm-hmm. and you know as long as you're not being taken advantage of then there's no respect exactly so then yep yeah absolutely yeah so yeah they definitely had some heat in there it was a lot of it was a very passionate relationship mm-hmm. so there's yes. a lot of a lot of arguing well i mean a lot of, you know a lot of fucking <laughs> 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 clearly <laughs> Whitney's got a lot of heat in her astrological code. You know, Leo's fire. Aries is fire. Mm -hmm. Her Venus is in Leo. That's fire. Mm -hmm. Her Jupiter is in Aries. That's fire. She's got a lot, lot of heat in her astrological code. So, yeah. Yes. And and you were mentioning something earlier about uh, Neptune, like the cloudiness mm-hmm. of Neptune and how she would kind of shroud some things mm-hmm. in secrecy. Mm-hmm. And 
um, I was just thinking back to Dorothy's reading and it was the same thing. Yes. How she only let me see that one man in her life. The other the other one, she didn't even mention him, you yes. know, and there was yes. a lot of like cloudy, a lot. Of, she came in with some cloudiness, light, but cloudy. That's the, the it's all just like Chiron is in everybody's astrological code. Mm-hmm. And so it all depends where it is to determine where the wound is Mm -hmm. within you. Neptune is also in everyone's astrological code. Mm -hmm. So the difference between Whitney and Dorothy is Whitney's Neptune is in the eighth house, which represents the bonds that you Mm -hmm. share with other people. So like her bond with Bobby Brown, her bond with Robin, Mm -hmm. those are things that are, they're closed off. No, no, you don't get to see that. Yeah. That's just in here. Dorothy her Neptune was in direct alignment with her son, which is her identity. Mm-hmm. So Whitney is showing you a lot, but not this over here, yeah. where Dorothy is shrouding her whole self. Yeah. So you can't see really anything. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. And that makes sense because when I see her, I'm seeing it's like a mist mm-hmm. with a light in the middle. Yes. Yes. That so makes like sense. A, that's, that's driving in the fog. Yeah. You know, and you just see like it's like a winter morning. <laughs> you know, it's like this is sunny, uh-huh. but it's it's misty and cloudy yes. outside. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's let's head on to uh, the Beverly Hilton. All right. On uh, February eleventh, twenty twelve. So a few days before that, I asked her. I said, "How were you feeling?" Yeah. You know, and she was like, "I was feeling great." Yeah. I felt great. I was in a great mood, very happy, excited. And tell our listeners about your story, oh, too. Oh, yes. So, you know? okay. So this was uh, the weekend of the Grammys, mm-hmm. right? And I used to work in the music industry. I used to work in music publishing. So um, me and a few of my friends, we were kind of club hopping that night, you know, because we have to go to these different places and stuff for work. And there was this club on... Selma. It's, yeah, it's on Selma. I think it's Selma and Ivar, actually, because yeah. I used to live on Ivar. And it was like right up the street. Okay. Yeah. So there was a club there and we were trying to get in. There was like a, a long line. But, you know, we were like, hey, we're with such and such company, uh-huh. whatever. Yeah. So the, the guy at the door is like, well, wait a minute. We hear Whitney Houston singing inside <laughs> of the club. I'm like, is that fucking Whitney Houston singing right now? And this was the the night before. Wow. This was the night before because now, I remember waking up the next day and hearing. Yeah, it was the night before because she died during the day, the next day. And I remember mm, hearing the news about right. her passing over. I'm like, and we were just like, oh, my God, can you believe it? We just heard her. Yeah. We never made it inside of the club, mm. but that was very interesting it was just like this is fucking wild but yeah it was it was really interesting i'm like oh my god i can't believe i got a chance to even though it was outside of a club i got a chance to hear her voice you know to feel the power last time yes so yeah that was pretty wild Mm. but she was very happy right she said she was feeling good feeling great i asked her i said whitney was it an overdose she said it was not an overdose uh, and then she said to me, she's like, do you know how long I've been getting high? I know how to get high, child. OK, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, OK. And then she said, plus she plus she had a child. She was like, I would never. She wasn't going to leave her behind. I'm not going to leave my baby right. behind. You yes. know, I don't care what was going on. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do that. Yep. And so she said, I wasn't going to leave my child behind. That night, she said that she had weed, cocaine, Xanax, white wine. And vodka Red Bull. Oh, that's all? That's a lot. That's a lot. (laughs) But, you know, she's, hey, you know, she knows how to do it. That was her cocktail. cocktail. That was my cocktail. (laughs) And that kept that kept her balanced pretty much. Mm -hmm. It kept her in the in-between stage Mm -hmm. that up and down, you know, I get it too. (laughs) (laughs) I I get it too. I understand. (laughs) And so she said that she was playing music. She couldn't remember the song. But she said, I was too high. So, like, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but she could hear her hotel door opening and close. And I've never been inside of that hotel room. The Beverly the Hilton. Beverly Hilton. I'm not, yeah. I mean, I've been inside of it for events, but, but I've never, never been into a, a, a room. room. Yeah. 
And what I'm seeing is like either dark black marble or like green marble in in the bathroom. And it's like a deep tub. Mm -hmm. The door, she's sitting here facing this way and the door is to her right. That's what I'm seeing. I don't know how accurate that is. You know, I don't know. I haven't seen pictures or anything like that. And so she hears this door open and close and she called out. Nobody answered. And then she said she was reaching for her robe on the floor. And then two men entered the room. Whoa. Okay. Entered the bathroom. Okay. One of them grabbed her as she was trying to stand up. And he pushed her back down, causing her to slip and hit her armpit in the inner shoulder. So like right, you know, underneath the armpit, she's kind of slammed down onto the tub. And another man injected her with something. Oh, my God. Okay. So this is what she's showing me. This Mm -hmm. is what she's saying happened. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, I said, do you know who they were? And she said, well, it was a hit pretty much. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked her, did anyone that she knew or who was close to her have anything to do with it? And she said, it's not that simple. It's not like just one person involved. Uh, She said, I owed them a job. Mm -hmm. I owed them a job. And I didn't want to deliver it. And uh, she said, people that I was really close to, there's a lot of them. I can't pinpoint one person and I don't want to start saying names without being totally sure. So uh, she says that these people are very wealthy. They have a long reach. They have deep covers. Um, And she said, you know what? Mine is probably one that won't ever be solved or won't be solved anytime soon because nobody's going to reopen the case. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody would have to go through a lot to mm-hmm. have her case reopened. But what, what was the job? Okay. So basically she was being commissioned to mentor a younger female artist. Okay. And basically her job was to kind of groom her and get her ready to be in the industry, but to also kind of serve in a sexual way. Okay. And she didn't want to do that because she has a daughter. And she was like, I'm not going to be responsible for not necessarily pimping her, but kind of making her feel safe about it. You know, if, if it's Whitney Houston saying, right, it's OK, you know, go ahead and whatever, whatever. You have to do what you got to do. Then, of course, someone would let their guard down. But yes, she's not showing me who the female is. I have a couple of ideas, but I'm not going to mention names. She's not showing me who the female is, but she's just saying that she was commissioned to pretty much assist with that. Yeah. And she was not doing that. Sounds like the underbelly of yes. the music biz. Yes. And, and so then she said there was also a cloaking and a confusion done around the case. So... Same thing. Like with the Kennedys. Like with the Kennedys, a cloaking. And that happens if you don't want somebody to know what you're doing. Right. You cloak it and you cause confusion, you know. You you throw a little chaos in there and shut it down and that's it. And if you have enough money and you have enough weight, then you can do that. Yes. So I don't know who exactly is responsible and but this is what Do she's you have ideas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to ask you to tell me directly. I but mean, I, I want I to I'm just curious. I, if you... you know what? If she doesn't know, I'm not going to assume. OK, fair enough. I'm not going to assume. Fair enough. You know what they say about assumptions, right? So. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is what she's showing me. This is allegedly. Is this etched in stone? Is this the truth? I don't know. But. She's saying it was not an overdose, that this was something that was done to her. She also believes that it was also done to her daughter, as well as Nick Gordon. The daughter's fiance. The daughter's fiance. So this Mm -hmm. is like some serious payback for something. For something. I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine that it would just be for the job that she didn't do. Yeah, that seems that seems like a heavy price. That's a lot. Yeah. You know, I don't think it was just for that. Um, I mean, I don't know. I really don't know what else it could be. But she's she's convinced that the same people who did this to her also are responsible for Bobby Christina and Mm. Nick Gordon. Well, 
she did have four planets moving through her 12th house Mm -hmm. when she died. And the 12th house is the house that's associated with the 12th sign, Mm -hmm. which is Pisces, which represents drugs and alcohol. So, you know, whether she died of an overdose or not, she was going through a lot in her unconscious mind Mm -hmm. during this period, taking a real tough look at what was going on buried deep within all of her psychological baggage. So, Chiron, the wound, Venus, the relationships, and Jupiter, expansion, were all in alignment with her Uranus, the unexpected. Interesting. And Uranus is in her sixth house, which represents her job. Mm -hmm. So an unexpected shift in relation to her job that had to do with her material security because that's where Jupiter was in the house of security. An unexpected shift to her relationships, her material security, and her unconscious wound Mm. all occurred on this day. Interesting. Saturn, the god of wealth and time, the authority, was moving through her eighth house, which is the house of death, Mm -hmm. the house of secrets. So... I don't know if that could be something indicates the authority is collecting a karmic debt. Possibly. It, I mean, it could be interpreted. Could be. It could be interpreted that way, whether that's I do what feel ha- I do feel like there may be some sort of karmic mm-hmm. debt there that needed to just be redeemed. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I feel yes. like there's a part of that is that that's that's why there's so much loss around mm-hmm. her family. Yes. You know. It's kind of like the Kennedys. Yeah, there's some, you know, for lack of a better term, and I mean, I I love demons, so (laughs) (laughs) I'm not trying to talk bad about them, but for lack of a better word, you know, that there's a a demon collecting Mm -hmm. on something that it was owed. Yes. Yeah. Well, Saturn is in the eighth house, the house of death. Pluto, the planetary ruler of the house of death, was transiting, moving through, Whitney's 10th house, which Mm. is the house of career. Mm -hmm. And Pluto was directly opposite Whitney's part of fortune, which is like your energetic treasure box Mm -hmm. where you're most fortunate in life. So having the God of death directly opposite wherever you're most fortunate in life, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like your luck has run out now. Uh, Time is up. Yeah. That's one way to look at it. Yeah, I would say that. I would definitely say that. And I think we do know in the entertainment industry and in sports arena, politics and things like that, some people feel like they have to make deals. In in reality, you don't. Right. You don't have to make a deal. No. But a lot of people don't know this. And if you're working with someone who knows how to twist that truth, they can make you believe that you have to sell your soul or you have to make some sort of deal compromise yourself or some sort of compromise or agreement with an entity and you really don't you can work in partnership with them but you don't really have to give them anything honestly you don't nope if you if you spend a little time this is why i encourage people that if you're going to and get yourself involved in magic you need to do it yourself mm-hmm or you need to work with someone who's going to tell you the truth about it and not just try to get you get your money and have you continuously coming back to them. Yes. So if you're going to work with magic, whether you're a celebrity, uh, a budding celebrity, you desire it, then you need to work with someone who knows what they're doing and they're not trying to take advantage of you because somebody will have you believing that you have to sell your soul. And that is not what you have to do. You don't have right. to do that. It does take work. You're going to have to work. Yes. You're going to have to do some work. But These energies are there to assist you as long as they see you taking the initiative and doing the work. You don't have to sacrifice anybody. You don't have to give up a blood sacrifice. (laughs) You don't have to sell your soul. No. But you do have to put the work in. Yep. You do have to do that. Yes. And and they will assist you. But you have to understand that you're always a sovereign being. Yes. Nothing and no one holds any power over you. But if you're desperate. And you have the wrong person telling you what you need to do, then you can fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that was the case with Whitney or not. 
we right. don't know. Right. You know, she's been, in, she was in the industry for a really long time. Yes. And she was very young. Totally. She was like, what, 15, mm-hmm. 16 when she started? And it's very easy to take advantage of a child who wants that or thinks that they want that life. But she already had connections in the industry. Like yeah. Like her godmother, Dionne Warwick. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean... Doesn't mean that you're, you're getting the... The fair shake of the... Exactly. That could have been a grooming sort of thing. It can also... There's a lot of trickery, too. You may not even know what what you're signing and agreeing to if you don't read everything, read the fine print. Yes. Read your contracts. Yes. There's a lot of people who are not here anymore because they signed a contract Mm -hmm. and they're not aware of what they're signing. Yes. So... Mars was also in alignment with her North Node, Soul's mm. Purpose. So that's mm-hmm. like a karmic alarm clock going off. Mm. And then the North Node transiting, moving through space on February 11th, 2012, was in alignment with her Pluto, the god of death. Mm. So another contract coming up. And it was in alignment with her Venus relationship. So there's a lot of ending of relationship, ending of contract. There's a lot of that happening in her astrological code with the transiting planets on the day that she passed. Wow. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. Well, <laughs> we'll never it's, know. Well, <laughs> I don't think I want to dig deeper than I already have. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, it's been fun taking a look at what we did take a look at. Absolutely. And yeah. yes. And, you know, before we round this out, I always like to get some last yes. words of wisdom from them. From the queen of the night. From the queen of the night. Yes. And she said, love like it's your last day on earth. Mm. It's love like it's your last day on earth. Because yes, you never know. Exactly. You know? More so, sage advice. Absolutely. I love it. And I'm happy that she was happy in the days leading up. Yes. I'm happy that she was happy. So and that it, lets me know, too, that it's a possibility that there could have been some foul play there. So we won't know. Right. This is allegedly, mm-hmm. allegedly, this For is sure. based off of an energetic metaphysical reading and astrological yeah, yeah. interpretation. Interpretation. Exactly. Yes. Yes. It is. Yes. It is. It really is. She is happy. Good. She's happy Good. for the most part. I don't get the feeling that she's holding on to anything. I mean, her baby is there with her mm-hmm. on the other mm-hmm. side. Yep. She's still yeah. singing. Yeah. She's still the queen of the night. Yes. <laughs> So she's solid. Mm. Yeah, she's solid well, on the other very, side. Very, very grateful. Yes. Very honored to have this conversation with you, Shara. Yes. And so I want to thank you. I want to thank Whitney Houston mm-hmm. for her openness with you and for being here with us and allowing me to look at her astrological code and see what's going on there. And Yes. Very, very thankful. And thank you, Scott. You're welcome. For all of your expertise and breaking it down the way you're breaking it down mm. makes me not feel crazy. You're not, you're not crazy <laughs> at all. No, you're sane. But doing this, sometimes you're just like, what in the world? Okay, am I going to say this out loud right now? Oh, you know? Yeah, whenever we have these conversations and you're saying something, I'm like, oh my God, that makes sense. Like, this is what it shows right here. Good. Yes. Good. It's, 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 it's nice to say okay the stars are saying that too yes, all right great absolutely. so yeah yes good stuff and thank you to our listeners thank you to our listeners yes. and once again thank you whitney houston yes yes thank you whitney bye whitney bye <laughs> it's important <laughs> to say goodbye to them bye whitney and say thank you and yes. close it out let's close it out that's right and wash your hands afterwards okay i'm doing that <laughs> <laughs> all righty guys we'll see you next time see you next time You've been listening to The Uncharted Territories, where we see the unseen in the world of matter. If you would like to support the podcast, subscribe. We've talked a lot about the subconscious mind and the importance of healing our wounds from the past. As an energy healer and a certified hypnotherapist, I help people understand how the mind works so they can harness the energy of the subconscious and tap into their inner power and make those positive long-term changes in their lives. If you're ready to make that change, 
You can book a session with me by connecting at opendoorhypnosis.com. I look forward to working with you. If you'd like to learn more about who you are, where you come from, why you're here, and what you're meant to do with your life, contact me, Scott Tajarian, at theweeklytransit.com, and we will take a close, detailed look at your astrological code. My purpose is to help you understand who you are so you can accept, appreciate, and love the divine, unique miracle that is you.